Welcome to my presentation of faux bois, or imitation wood, from the priming of raw plywood to the final mores of the mahogany styles and rails. This is a concise step-by-step -step presentation. After several coats of sprayed shellac, it is important to make the panel look like a single piece construction. By filling screw holes and joints with two coats of ready patch, we can make our carpenter's amazing work look even better. Once completely dry, sand with medium or 220 grit to even out the patchwork. Make it all look and feel flush. Remember, wood still breathes once it's cut. It contracts and expands in changing temperatures, so sealing gaps and joints with caulking is a must. It also makes the panel look slick. Now we prime our improvements. Do not skip this step, you will regret it later. Plaster has a higher absorption quality, so if left unprimed, the higher sheen coats will make these areas look matte. We call this flashing. With the water-based semi-gloss, paint from the inside out, starting with moldings. The panel can be brushed or rolled. For burl, I prefer rolling, even though I have brushed it here. Be sure to make the cuts for the styles and rails. In wood, it is traditionally styles cut the rails, or vertical cut horizontal. I forgot to give my carpenter proper instruction, so it is switched here. This construction is preferred when doing faux marble. After the second coat is complete, you should sand, dust, and tape off your panel and baseboard for wood graining. For mahogany, we need to glaze and flog to create the pores of the wood, which I'll elaborate on later. For the burl, using a water glaze of burnt sienna, burnt and raw umber, spread on your panel and with a sea sponge create the movement. Take the same mixture, add more umber and black, and glaze in an organic manner. Pierre Finkelstein explains it best. Hold the 100 spalter in quacking duck position. Play the piano keys with the bristles and use your arm as a pendulum in an organic back and forth motion in order to create the essence of the burl or bird's eye maple morays. This is an essential common wood graining technique and extremely effective. Vary the pressure and incrementation of the morays, then take your sea sponge and wipe off areas above and below the location where you added extra color to. This creates more depth and cuts down the process of layering glazes. Keep your sponge wet so you can wipe your spalter frequently. The moisture will assist in opening up the glaze as you go back into your design. Finally, take your softener to feather the glaze, making it more subtle and even. Burl comes from contusions at the root or a few meters up on the trunk of the tree. The so-called deformity is caused by a virus or fungus sometimes transmitted by insects. With a wet white bristle artist brush, create the knots or dormant buds by twisting the brush. Add umber or black for depth and soften. Next, we need to create the grain. With a vignette brush, dip it into a glaze one or two values lighter, open up the hairs, and create a movement that works well with your design. You can also open up the hairs of the bristle with a comb if you prefer. The color and glaze consistency are very difficult and takes a lot of practice. Do not get frustrated. I did not develop this ability in three minutes, but many years. Please keep practicing. All my brushes are handcrafted in France and are a tradition of the craft, and you can contact me for further information on where to purchase them. If you're wondering, this particular sample had to be completed in a day for my designer and all layers are done in fast drying mediums. Oil, base coats, and glazes can make the process easier and the outcome more refined but would take days. Once I get the job, I will do the technique in both water and oil. Take a new glaze of burnt sienna, burnt and raw umber, and alizarin and crimson and overglaze the panel. Here we can create more depth and more mores. Also pushing and removing the glaze in areas around the knot simulates sap accumulation for added effect and then soften. After the glaze is dry, remove and reverse the tape in order to wood grain the styles and rails. Tape off the greatest area that you can glaze first, saving the smaller and easier areas for last. In my case, rails, base, and chair molding first. I want the mahogany to be darker than the burl, so I apply two coats of different color at the same time. The first is burnt sienna, burnt and raw umber, and alizarin and crimson, and the second is raw umber, burnt umber, and black. The flogging brush is made with hair from a horse's tail, so it whips nicely. Hold the brush like a drummer holds sticks and flog the surface like you are playing the drums. Sweet. Truly, listening to music will benefit your work. Hone in on the rhythm and transfer that energy into your brush. The better the rhythm, the more natural your painting becomes. Lack of self-confidence and doubt will show in your brush strokes, but music can help that.
With the same two glazes, apply a second coat and flog. Notice, do the joint of the rail and molding first by flipping the brush on its side and flogging. This will get the excess glaze out and make flogging the rail much easier. Once dry, flip the tape and now let's do the styles in the exact same process we did on the rails. I put the sample back to its upright position because when I have to perform the technique on site, the vanity and wainscot will already be installed and I must be able to repeat the technique as is. When you paint imitation wood, the color is about 70% of the effect and the remaining 30% is where your art is. The more knowledge you obtain about wood by studying the tens of thousands of various species, the closer your imitation will fool the viewer in the real world. Apply a brownish red earth tone glaze and with a 40 spalter draw your figure by pressing and removing the glaze. Come back into the drawing with an artist brush and umber off the palette. Then, add more brown and red with the spalter and drag along the drawn figure. Repeat this process on the upper rail and molding. Here I have changed the direction of the figure grain for compositional purposes. I did not want much figure grain on the styles and rails because the viewer's attention should be attracted to the panel and the burl. Glaze the styles accordingly with the same brownish red glaze. Drag the 40 spalter to create the side grain, and with your softener, scratch one side of the grain lightly to create the cross grain and soften lightly. The cross grain should be lighter, and by scratching with the brush, will push and remove the glaze, making a subtle but realistic effect. Once the grain design is completed and dry, we have to apply the final toning glaze. I like to think of it as a stain. Remove all the tape from the panel and apply a rich, earthy red glaze of burnt sienna, alizar and crimson, burnt umber, and a touch of black. Here, we add the final mores in the mahogany and the sap accumulation. For that technique, push the glaze down and up to create a butterfly-like accumulation of glaze around the waviest part of the grain. Take a rag and remove glaze from inside the butterfly wings and soften. To conclude, faux bois is the French terminology for the traditional decorative painting technique of imitation wood. The term faux or fake itself implies the painting of natural substance such as leather, marble, stone, wood, etc. We do not use this term to describe a technique with a particular tool such as ragging, sponging, or any other misnomers fellow English speakers use to pigeonhole our craft. It is important to understand the difference and to correct our industry's terminology so our craft can maintain the high level of professionalism that it is. Remember, these techniques outdate us by hundreds of years, so we must maintain and uphold their integrity. Thank you.